So there's something that bugs me about a lot of programming communities, and that includes the IDA community. Uh, if you had read the blog post on uh, um, Tomek Wawrzewski, I hope I'm saying that right. My Polish ain't great. Um, but the short little interview with me that I, um, I alluded to that, that I just really don't like the Ada community in general. Um, in, in general, okay? In general. Uh, but this applies to some issues with others. Uh, sometimes the entire community, sometimes just a subset of that community. And uh, I want to explain why through analogy. Now, clearly I'm out here in my shop not in anything to do with a computer. And uh, well, let's get this flipped around. You'll have to excuse the mess because I am a remarkably disorganized worker. It's sort of fucking awful. But the analogy I want to do is with certain tools. And while it might not seem like this is going anywhere or has any relevancy at first, just bear with it. I promise this is going to make sense. So let's cover hammers. Uh, I think my claw hammer is over here. Yep. She's a bit dusty because I haven't been needing this much lately. But this is your standard claw hammer, probably what you're going to recognize is just the most common hammer because th these are really common. Obviously, any hammer used for striking. So you have your striking head, but you also have this claw here, which is really useful for prying on things. Typically nails, that's why it's got the slit there, but it had, you know, it, it's, it's for prying. Now let's go back over here. We have also a masonry hammer. Now you'll notice, fairly similar looking. It's got the striking head, which is almost the same. This part, quite a bit different. And in fact, this, I mean, it can be used for prying, but it's generally not. Uh, it happens to be really good for breaking apart the mortar between bricks or stones or whatever by chiseling into them, basically. Oh yeah, I have another claw hammer. I happen to actually like this one much more. Fiberglass handles are really nice. So let's look at a considerably different kind of hammer. This here is a mallet. Still, like any hammer, used for striking. But these have different degrees of softness to them. In fact, mallets are quite soft compared to most hammers because they are used to strike in a non-marring way, such as you got a piece of wood that's going to be held somewhere under tension. It's usually a good idea to bolt it in as well, but you need to get it into place and don't want to put dents in it. Well, that's what this guy's for. Totally different from that. We got a machinist's hammer. Now this is heavy as shit. This model specifically is a two pounder, but they come in different weights and it is just straight up for striking things really hard, but in a way that allows for recoil as most hammers do. Now that's going to become an important distinction because, and I have a set of them, we got these guys which fairly similar in concept it's just heavy two striking heads but this is a dead blow and you can kind of hear it there's shot in there so that when you strike against something the shot which while it moving is towards the back once it hits the shot comes down and that helps prevent recoil so you use this guy when you need follow through rather than need recoil. Then, and I'm sure you saw these, I've got two others somewhere else. Uh, I think over here. Yep. 
But this is a ball peen hammer. It can use in a similar fashion to a machine at Sammer to just, you know, uh, strike uh, with a very heavy weight with recoil. But these are most notable for the actual peening parts, which is, I mean, peening is repeatedly hitting metal in a way that hardens it. And the ball peen from just the shape. There's also cross peen hammers, which I don't have, but uh, yeah. And you probably noticed something from that. Each of those had a slightly different use. They were all used for striking, but in different ways. They all excelled at different things. You can use basically any hammer for striking purposes, you know, it, it, if you happen to have a nail and the only hammer you have available is, say, a machinist hammer, you're still going to be able to pound that in just fine. But, you know, claw hammers obviously are going to excel at that. And you kind of either need a claw hammer or a pry bar to remove the nail. You can't remove a nail with a machinist hammer. This is a... This is the point I want to make. Many programming communities or subsets of programming communities have this attitude that their language is flawless for everything. The large variation in other tools, like hammers, should get the point across that you can't have any kind of universal tool. This is also why there's a large amount of different power tools and you can kind of see different saws and I can keep going with that. There is a lot of different tools because everything does something well and does something poorly. And that's okay, but you kind of need to recognize that. This is part of why I am very open about what programming languages are used. I don't really care as long as you're using a programming language that is well suited for the task that you're doing, and most people just sort of implicitly do that, then that's that's okay. That's That's good. But don't use the wrong tool for the job if you can help it. It's sort of an annoying analogy, but I mean, you can, you can hammer in a screw. It's just the wrong way to do it. Same idea. And I, I really don't like seeing that. I, I, I think it makes the overall programming community um, hostile and unpleasant because your decisions that really aren't going to affect the end product in any substantial way are going to still be criticized as if they are. Now this isn't to say that nobody ever uses the wrong tool for the job. Uh, I think people should probably question using Python for some of the stuff that it's used for. But there are things that Python is good at. There are things that Ada is good at. There are things that Java is good at. And I can go on and on and on. Things are diverse. And I think that actually makes it better. I've just gotten really sick of seeing the evangelizing and proselytizing of programming languages because it really comes across like many programmers treat their programming language like a church that they are sort of fanatically religious but their religion just happens to be a programming language and it's absolutely ridiculous this is one of the major reasons why I really don't like to consider myself a programmer, but rather am just a guy who 
knows how to do a few things, and one of them happens to be programming. Before I forget, I should add a few more points. Uh, one is there is a great read that unfortunately is getting sort of old in the general programming community, and so it's sort of being forgotten, even though it really shouldn't because it's some great advice. Um, there is a section of a book called The Mythical Man Month that is um, No Silver Bullet. And I think that it would be worth reading if you... I mean, if you agree or disagree with me, it would really be worth reading. Um, it's always good to hear other viewpoints, and, you know. Don't, don't, don't get yourself into an echo chamber. But it, it mostly talks about how there's no, um, you know, like no single algorithm that suits every single thing perfectly, but it really does apply to programming languages as well, since you can kind of think of them as constructing the algorithm differently, uh, because the assembly underneath is always going to be a bit different, uh, just because of di different um, semantics within programming languages, different ways of structuring them. So the other thing is... If you look at the comments on enough videos or Reddit posts, you'll see what at least I think is a surprising amount of criticism over the way I pronounce Ida. It is still an allophone of A. It's not the one the Brits use, and therefore there is an extensive amount of criticism over it. As if there's a huge difference between Aida and Aida. One is slightly darker, as it's referred to. But that's pretty much it. Although you also get some Brits who add the R at the end of it, which I don't see why that should be there at all. And they take issue with that not being there. But Aida, short for Adelaide. I use the same phoneme that is present in Adelaide because Ida is just the shorthand, the nickname for it. Taking issue with a name, or especially just the pronunciation of a name, is oddly reminiscent, to me at least, of the ridiculous debate you see in Christianity over whether the God should be called God with a capital G, Jehovah, or Yahweh. They're literally all talking about the same thing, but they take a remarkable amount of offense to each other and look down on each other because of a difference in name. Seriously, guys, I should not be able to draw parallels to religion. It's it's programming. I, there should not be parallels like this.